Hi Ryan, thanks for sending your question. Um, I just wanted to let you know that Snap Math has tutors working to help you Sunday through Thursday from 4 to 10 p.m. So if you send your question in during those hours or days, we'll make sure to get back to you right away. Let's take a look at the side, side, side triangle that you sent me. Um, these are the most complicated. To find our first angle, we need to use the law of cosines. The law of cosines um, looks a little something like this. We're going to take side C, square it, and that's equal to side A squared plus side B squared minus 2 times side A times side B times cosine of angle C. You see my big letters are my angles here. The, for finding the second angle, we're going to use the law of sines, which says basically that if I take the sine of any of these angles and put it over um, any of these sides, that those are all equal to each other. And then to find our third angle, we're going to use the fact that the sum of the interior angles of any triangle is equal to 180. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. As you can see, I've placed angle A across from side A, angle B across from side B, and angle C across from side C to help us keep things straight. Applying the law of cosines, side C squared, so 10 squared, is equal to side A squared, 5 squared plus side B squared, so 7 squared, minus 2 times side A times side B times the cosine of angle C. Let's go ahead and simplify so that we can solve for cosine C. So it looks like we get 100 is equal to 25 plus 49. 2 times 5 times 7 is 70. So this will be minus 70 times cosine of C. 25 times 49 is 74. So our right hand side simplifies down to this. And we're just going to solve for cosine C like we would solve for any unknown. Let's go ahead and subtract 74 from both sides. And when we do that, we get 26 on the left hand side and we'll get negative 70 cosine C on the right hand side. Let's go ahead and divide both sides by 70. If you do that, you should get negative 13 over 35 on the left hand side. And then you'll just be left with cosine C on the right hand side. So now we can solve for our first angle. So C is the angle whose cosine is negative 13 over 35. So let's go ahead and use a cosine inverse function to find out um, what that angle actually is. So cosine inverse of 13, 35 should be equal to angle C by our logic above. That is definitely a calculator problem. So let's go ahead and plug that in. And we get that that angle is 111.8 degrees approximately. We'll go ahead and round it to one, dec or one decimal place there. So C is equal to 111.18 degrees. I mean 0.8 degrees, I'm sorry. So we just finished with the hardest part, which is finding our first angle using the law of cosines. Now let's go ahead and use the law of sines to find our second angle now that we have one angle. So it looks like I can say that sine of C over C is equal to the sine of any of these other two angles over their sides. Let's just go ahead and work backwards um, and choose angle B. So since C is equal to 111.8 degrees, sine of 111.8 degrees over side C, which was 10, is equal to sine of B, which I don't know what that is yet, over side B, which is 7. This again is definitely a calculator problem. So it looks like sine of 111.8 degrees is equal to point 
nine two eight five approximately. Two eight five divided by ten is equal to sine b over seven. Okay, let's go ahead and solve for sine b just like we did before. So point nine two eight five divided by ten is approximately well, we just moved the decimal place over one, right? So we'll get 0 0.09285. That, of course, is equal to sine b over 7 still. Let's go ahead and multiply both sides by 7. And if you do that, on the left-hand side, we should end up with 0.6499 approximately. And on the right-hand side, sine b will be by itself. So b is the angle whose sine is 0.6499 approximately. So let's go ahead and use a sine inverse function to solve for b. So by the logic above, b is equal to sine inverse of 0.6499. With our handy dandy calculator, Turns out that B is equal to approximately 40.5 degrees. So let's go ahead and mark that on our triangle. Okay, now the easiest part. Um, finding this last angle is basically just a process of elimination. So I know that the sum of the angles is 180, and I have two of my angles. So let's take 180 degrees minus angle A, which is 111.8, minus angle B, which we determined was approximately 40.5 40 degrees, and that should give me angle C. Whoops, angle A. Angle A, sorry about that. So 180 minus 111.8 minus 40.5 is equal to approximately 27.7. Actually, that's exactly equal to 27.7. So that is what angle A is equal to. So it looks like we have all the sides and all the angles filled in in our triangle. So our triangle is now complete. Thanks again for your question, Ryan, and I look forward to answering more of your questions using SnapMath in the future.